I didn't mean to remind. All right. Here's what we're going to cover on this session. The 14 points of comprehensive review. If you don't know what that is, don't worry. I will let you know. I should have rhymed that. I will help you anyway. How to find your four topics. I'm going to take you through some uh, really, I mean, it's just show you like here are some topics that the students have considered. Give you a place that you can hopefully find some of your PIQ topics. I'm going to walk you through three different structures that you can use to brainstorm how to actually write them. I'm going to share with you what I believe to be the most important element for your opening of your PIQs. Um, I've got uh, some examples. I might even do more than two great examples. And then I'm going to share with you what I believe to be the five essential qualities of a great PIQ. If you got a question, put it in the chat box. Ashley is going to put your name and your question here, and I'll cover them at the end. All right. I'm going to stop sharing my screen right now because y'all don't need to look at that right now. All right. Um, my quick background. What do you need to know about me? Uh, I'm a college essay guy. I spend all my day and night in this room thinking about college essays. And I've spent the past month, really the past month, like thinking about the personal insight questions because I just created uh, a whole new set of resources around the PIQs. This is kind of like the short version of that. So you're going to get, you know, I mean, it's a lot of content, but I, I'm going to try to give you the 45 minute version. And, um, hopefully get you set off on the right path. I've been living in California for the past 15 years, helping students with their UCs. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I think about these a lot. We're going to focus mostly on the PIQs, like the personal insight questions. But in order to focus on the personal insight questions, we have to know what their purpose is. So what is the purpose of these personal insight questions? Well, if you Google 14 points of comprehensive review, you see, you will see a list of 14 things that the UCs are looking for. So let me share my screen again so you can kind of see what they are. This is not a mystery. They publish these. So check this out. Here are the 14 points of comprehensive review. All right. Things like your grade point average, your test scores. The UCs are looking for how you've done in your A through G courses. Those are the required courses you need to take. Approved honors courses, advanced, right? So it's obviously grades. You know, those are really important. Eligibility in the local context, if you're in California and you're one of the top students in your school, you're going to get into a UC. Congratulations. Um, how hard are your classes this year? Did you kind of take it easy or did you like really go for it? What opportunities were available in your school, especially if you're in California? Did you make the most of those opportunities? One of the big things that UCs are looking for is, did you make the most of the opportunities available to you? Okay. Quick note, Ashley, will you, I notice I'm tiny in the screen in the corner, like I sometimes am. Will you make my screen just my, my face a little bit larger because I'm so tiny down here. I feel like, honey, I shrunk the kids. A reference that most of you will not get. Um, how did you do in a, you know, a particular subject area? Now, why am I going over these? Because your personal insight questions, and I'll give you the prompts in just a second, need to correspond, need to check the boxes for these elements of comprehensive review. For example, if you've had a special project, and that could mean a lot of different things, right? It could be something you've done outside school. It could be something that you've, you know, research that you've done on your own. It could be an internship. Um, there are lots of things that could fall under special projects. Improvement in academic performance. If you didn't get great grades your freshman year, but you've like steadily improved, that's something the UCs are interested in. Special talents, achievements, and awards. Again, that's a big category. A special talent could be anything from you know, a particular instrument that you play or a sport. It could be something a little bit more uncommon. I'll give you some examples in a little bit, don't worry. Uh, educational prep programs. These are those programs that are geared towards helping students really make the most of, really, really, you know, really to prepare for college. Academic accomplishment in light of life experiences. If you've been through challenges in your life and you've done, been able to succeed in school nonetheless, the UCs want to know about it. And then geographic location. Now, what you'll notice is some of these things you can't have any control over. You have no control over where you are geographically. So there's not like anything you can do at this point, you know, and some for some of you, you know, your grades are pretty much what your grades are. And so one of the things that you can control still at this point of the process is what are the topics that I'm choosing for my UC personal insight questions? So what are the UC personal insight questions? Uh, let me let me let me scroll up here. But I'm, actually, I'm not going to get into the, the, those any further. Let me just give you the prompts. But I'm, but I'm, but I'm, here they are. So here's the use. Here are the UC personal insight questions. So they ask you to choose four of these eight prompts. Okay, and you can see I've highlighted in bold here the different basically like topics. You're going to choose four, and they're going to be 350 words or less. Okay, so this is you know a leadership one, and I think just a quick tip: if you've got some leadership to talk about, it's a strong way to start your personal insight questions. Okay, so you might choose the leadership prompt. Then you've got creative side, and it can be expressed in a lot of different ways. 
Okay. I'll give you some examples in just a minute. I'm going to go through the leadership and the creative one. Greatest talent or skill. Now, my advice on the greatest talent or skill one is not to keep it vague. Like my greatest talent is like, you know, uh, you know, like uh, hanging out with people or like, you know, connecting with people and just talking about how you really enjoy people. If you can connect it to specific activities that you've done, you know, things that you've done, ways that you've excelled in the classroom, or for example, you know, projects that you've undertaken outside of school. That's a way, because we want to see how did, you just want to know what have you done to manifest these things in your life? Okay, so whatever you end up picking, for example, for greatest talent or skill, make sure that you're giving specifics about how you've manifested that. Again, I'll give you some examples in a bit. How have you taken advantage of a significant educational opportunity? And that's kind of open-ended. That could mean a lot of different things. Or overcome an educational barrier. Maybe your school didn't offer such and such opportunity or such and such class, and so you went and found it on your own. A significant educational opportunity could be something that you did over the summer, for example, that allowed you to explore an interest in, I don't know, business or an interest in science. What have you done outside school? Describe the most significant challenge you faced. This is for students who've been through significant challenges. And if it has, how has this challenge affected your academic achievement? So if you come from a low-income family or, you know, your, you know, there's been just personal family issues. Um, those could be worth discussing in your personal statement, especially as relevant to what did you do about it and what did you learn to the experience? Okay, more on that shortly. An academic subject that inspires you. This is another one I really love because I think it allows you to show that intellectual vitality. What are you bringing to the school? What is that? If you have a major in mind, what is that major? And what are the experiences that you've had that have led up to that? And then, of course, how have you manifested it? Not just like, oh, I'm interested in science because of science class, but what have you done outside of school? in the world of science. I love this one too. What have you done to make your school or community a better place? What volunteer experience have you spent the most time with? And then this one is kind of like a, if, if whatever you want to talk about doesn't fit into all these, what do you believe makes you stand out? You know, and they're asking a pretty direct question. Um, now I have some like quick tips that I'm going to, that I, I've, I've talked about some of these already, but um, let me just, let me hit on a couple of these. The purpose of your PIQs is to help differentiate you in a good way from other students in your school. So keep that in mind as you're thinking about your topics and I'm going to get into how do you pick your topics in just a minute, but ask yourself, okay, when they're looking at applications from me versus like whatever the three other or eight other or 15 other people from my school who are applying, what are those things, whether it's leadership, academics, you know, stuff that I've been doing that are going to set me apart from those other students. Okay. You should also know that the UCs make it a pretty straight, it's a pretty straightforward process. Okay. And I, I really like that. I think the UCs are really all about diversity. They're about access. You know, I, you may not know this, but more than 56% of UC undergrads pay no tuition. And two out of three students from California who applied to the UCs last year got in. This is straight from their website. Okay. You can also, you should know, you can apply for fee waivers if your family's low income. So... Anyway, I, I want you all to feel like this is accessible. You can do this, okay? Um, it's also, you should know that it's okay to answer these personal questions, in, a, in inside questions in a really, in a direct way, okay? If you want to go bullet points, you can. I know this because I've, UC directors have said in public at conferences that they could, students can use bullet points. Now, if you have really good bullet points, you can like turn those into sentences and those sentences become paragraphs and, you know. So um, I believe because UC readers are reading so fast, they've got, hundreds of applications are going through that they should be able to skim your responses and get your main points. Okay. Cause they're going to spend like six, eight minutes, not just on every essay on the whole application, by the way, it's not called an essay. It's called a personal insight question. This is not an academic piece of writing. This is information that connects to those 14 points of comprehensive review. Okay. And these are going to be different from your personal statement, right? Your personal statement is a separate application. That's 650 words. It's going to go for common app for private schools. You're applying to the UCs, in case it wasn't clear, public schools, you're going to write four again. And those four that you write are going to go to all the UC. So don't be writing about how much you love UCSDs, this and that, because what about how's, how's uh, you know, UC Riverside going to feel about that? So you don't need to put in school specific stuff necessarily. And I would encourage you all to apply widely. So if you're going to apply to one UC, you might as well apply to a few because they're, you can probably find some things to love about them. Okay. Let's get into picking your topics. So for me, one of the best ways to pick your topics is to create your preliminary activities list. So what do I mean by this? Well, the UCs ask you to label your activities. These are your extracurricular activities with one of these labels, awards and honors, educational prep programs, extracurricular activities, other coursework, if you have any, volunteering, community service, and work experience. Now, if you don't have any of these things, it's okay. You don't have to fill in all the blanks. 
but they want to know basically what have you been what have you been up to right and they're going to ask you for hours per week weeks per year position organization name right you're going to describe it briefly this is what these are going to look like let me just show you a quick example of what these just take a look at this for a second this is what a sample description is going to look like right so for here you know they might say describe the organization so you describe that second box how are you involved what did you learn you describe it okay now why am i telling you to do this first because oftentimes when it comes to these personal insight questions the things that you're going to be using as your topics let me just go back to these prompts for a second the things you're going to be using from as your topics are going to be those things that you put in your activities list now some students might be like well wait isn't it going to be redundant if i've got like you know i've said whatever i've said in my activities list and then i'm talking about it in my um in my personal insight questions won't they already have that information well hopefully in your personal insight questions you're going to be sharing information and insight that isn't in those tiny you know those those short descriptions because those descriptions are kind of short let's look at it again okay it's hard to capture all of the awesomeness of every single thing that you've been doing especially if you spend a lot of time doing it in these tiny descriptions right look at this look how short this description is so hopefully there's more stuff to share okay Here's a list of different activities that student, you know, the different kinds of things that students put in here, right? Everything from sports, basketball, tennis, cross country, volleyball, football, you know, maybe you took a course online, maybe in theater, or what, what kind of theater do you do? Do you do acting, directing, playwriting, stagecraft, dramaturgy, all of it? Do you do model United Nations? And if you need a list of like things to remember, if you just Google 80 plus extracurricular activities, college essay guy, if you're trying to remember like, I don't remember what I've done, you'll see a, a huge list, just Google 80 plus extracurricular activity examples, and you'll see a big list. Now, these are all for the Common App. So you'll notice these descriptions are a little bit shorter, okay? Notice that description is shorter than what you would be doing for the UCPIQs, right? This description is gonna be a little bit longer. Go ahead and use this space, y'all. I know I haven't really got the PIQs yet, but I just wanna emphasize how important it is to do a great job on your uh, preliminary activities list, because if you do a great job on that, uh, it's going to just show a ton about what you've done, and then you can get into some of those logistics in the PIQs, and I'll get to that, how to do that in just a second. Also, I want to ping for you all that there are sometimes activities that you may not have considered including, but they count. Like, do you take care of your younger siblings? Are you involved in your church, temple, mosque, etc.? Photography. Oh, that's just something I do for fun. Well, but if you spend like 10 hours a week on it, or like you spend a bunch of time on it, it could be something that's worth considering. Okay. Writing. You know, students are like, no, it's just whatever. It's just me writing poems. Well, how many poems you've written? Well, I've got like, you know, 10 journals full. And it's like, what? That's a thing. It could be something that's worth including. Okay. Um, you know, there's just some other ones. There's some random ones like training pet goats, <laughs> you know, book clubs that you've done outside of school. Some of you are like having ideas. You're like, oh, okay, okay. I, I see what he's talking about. Once you've got a list of your activities, you know, um, I think it's good to just sort of write basic descriptions for those. Then here's how to pick your four topics. All right, so I think, like I said, your UC activities list is a great place to find your topics. Remember that your goals are one, to stand out in a good way from other students applying from your school. That doesn't mean that you have to only pick obscure things to write about. You can write a good quality debate essay or violin essay. It takes a little more work to stand out and I'll get to how to do that in just a minute. But um, again, you're trying to make yourself stand out. You're trying to demonstrate how you've made the most of the opportunities you've received, which I mentioned. And we gotta connect back to those 14 points of comprehensive review. All right, here are some ideas. And, I, and one, one of the things you can kind of think about is as you're picking your topics is to think of this as kind of like a four track playlist that you're making. You wanna make sure, and you can see these examples here, that your activities are clearly different. So for example, this student, the first one wrote UC1, which is on leadership, about some significant family responsibilities. That's how she demonstrated leadership. And then her creativity one, her UC2, was on acapella singing. So those are clearly different. The fourth one, working as a teacher's assistant, was her educational, significant educational opportunity. And then the seventh one is some work that she's done around advocating for workers' rights. Do you notice how those are way different? You can almost think of them as like, again, like different tracks on a playlist. And the reader is, in most cases, going to read them in order. So you can kind of think, okay, what's going to be my strong track that's going to open up my playlist? How do I keep them dancing with track two? Right? How do I keep them, keep them on the floor for track three? And then what do I want as a closer? Okay, so what that sometimes has students doing is having their first or fourth topic be their strongest topic, 
right? Or you know, these are the strong ones. And if they have a weaker one, they find a way to like work it in for a prompt that's like, you know, somewhere in the middle. Because this is when you're making your first impression, obviously. And this is when you're making your last impression on them, right? So here's some other examples that students have chosen. And again, I want to emphasize this having different topics that connect to different sides of you, right? Think of these as different colors. So this one is red, this one is blue, this one is purple, and this one is, I don't know, fuchsia. And that's kind of red. Uh, but just making sure that they're clearly different sides of you. So that you're not like, oh, debate. Or if like you're STEM heavy, it's not like every single personal insight question is like all about STEM, science, science, science. Like, can you get another topic in there to show some other um, side of you? Okay, here are some common topics that students have chosen. Again, not saying you shouldn't choose these, but these are, again, to kind of just get you thinking about what, what, could, I, what could I potentially okay. And then here's some topics that I would personally avoid because they're so common. The big performance personal insight question where it's like, it, whether it's you're getting ready to go on stage to do a dance or give a speech and your you know, palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. Um, and you're getting ready to like go out there and you're just like, oh, I can't do this. And then you realize, oh, I can do this. And you develop confidence along the way. That's a pretty common topic. Some of you just went, oh my God, I got to rewrite that. Um, there's the big game PIQ, which is like it's bottom of the ninth, you're, you know, end of the third quarter and your team is down two and you got to really dig deep, right? I wouldn't recommend writing that because if it's a sports essay, we don't care as much whether you won or lost or as often happens is like you lost, but you won in life, right? We want to know, how did that sport, what did that teach you about life, right? What are the, what are the uncommon connections you can make? Um, and then with the sports injury one, right? It's like, I pop my, you know, snap right at the beginning of the essay. And then I, even though I wasn't able to play the sport, I was able to contribute in all these other ways. All, again, a really common structure. So I wanna encourage you, if you have a sport that you care a lot about, can you find some ways, and I'll share with you, again, a brainstorm in just a second to show other sides of you. Or the mission trip, PIQ. Now I've seen fewer of these this year. And I think because travel is down, but it's when a person who has relative privilege goes to somewhere else where students have relatively less privilege and they learn a valuable life lesson. Um, so anyway, I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend those those because I think they're more common. Um, let me scroll down, let me scroll down. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, here's, okay. So anyway, my, my, I guess my point is before I before I move forward, I'm gonna share my face for just a second. I, I want you to pick what I, what I would what I would say like your strongest topics. And what I mean by strongest topics is um, is you have to kind of think of these as buckets. And if you're imagining that you're talking about as much of yourself as you can so that you can demonstrate all the awesomeness of you and what sets you apart from other students, what are gonna be these buckets that are gonna allow you to show these different sides of yourself? So let me say, one of, for example, if something that you do a lot is debate, maybe there's a debate bucket. So which sides of yourself could you bring into the debate one? Intellectual vitality, you know, your connection with your you know debate teammates, whatever that is. If something that you do a lot is like, you know, you spend a lot of time with your family and you support around the house. Okay, that's me, you know, older sibling, whatever that role is that you play, show me that leadership or show me that connection to your family or commitment, right? So that's, you can kind of, again, kind of think of these as buckets. What different sides of myself could I put in? It's, you know, one thing that I do, but like, how is that a representation of a part of my identity? Who is, how is debate me and how that me expresses myself different from the, you know, the family me? you know, who's, who's helping to support around the house. Okay. So mm -mm -mm -mm. I'm going to go back to my, I don't need, I don't need to show you that. I want to, I want to be able to like talk to y'all. Um, oh, you know what? Sorry. I do need to show you this. All right. So here are three, once you've got your topics. And again, I would say you're going to need to, you can't do this right now, but you're going to need to create your activities list. I think in order to see what are your options for things that you could write about. And then you're going to go to your personal insight questions, go to the, the, the prompts and go, okay, which of these could I, do I think I could rock? You know, leadership, do I have anything leadership wise? What can I think of and keep thinking about it? Okay, creativity, do I have anything for creativity? Okay, yeah, I could see this. And you're just gonna put those options there, okay? Maybe you come up with five options. And once you've got those options, right? Academic subject, could I rock a philosophy essay? You know, what would an essay on whatever you're, whatever you're great at? especially if there's a major that you're really into and you feel on a scale of one to 10, if you feel seven to 10 strong about it, I like to tell my students, you should maybe consider it. And if you're applying to the UCs for like engineering, like especially like Berkeley, UCLA, you probably want to write an essay that demonstrates how you're going to set yourself apart from other people who are applying to these, what are called impacted majors, right? These are these majors and I'm not going to get into too much right now, but there are a lot of students applying for them. So how do you differentiate yourself? 
that you know academic subject one can be a way to differentiate you academically from other students applying to the same major. Okay. Once you've got four or five ideas for this, then here are three exercises that you can use in order to brainstorm your content. All right. Feel free to take notes. You can do screenshots, whatever you want to do. All right. So when it comes to creating draft zero, which is my one of my coaches, Josh, uses this term. I really love it. I got to give credit to Josh for that. The draft zero. This is like just getting started. This is not even your first draft. Okay. This is three ideas for that. How are you going to know if the topics work? So the three exercises are, number one, this is a cheesy name, the best extracurricular activity brainstorm I've ever seen. It's called the BBs. And this is good for any PIQ that's not about a challenge. So if you're writing about uh, football and you're like, yeah, it's not really challenges. I want to focus more on how it shapes me or tennis or whatever it is. Um, and I think it's especially good for extracurricular activities. And I'll show you that exercise in just a second. Next, you might have something that I call this the Elon Musk exercise that where you're facing a big problem, like you're trying to, you know, combat racism or you're trying to combat, like maybe there wasn't enough recycling in your school and, and you basically came up with an idea to do something about it. And maybe you're using this uh, to talk about leadership or you're using this for your UC7 to talk about a way that you've contributed to your community. I've got something called the Elon Musk exercise that works really well for that. I'll share it in a second. And then if you face challenges, personal challenges, stuff related to your family, um, that, that have really shaped you, there's something called the feelings and needs exercise. And I think that one's really good for the UC5. All right, so check it out. This is the best extracurricular activity brainstorm I've ever seen. I'm making a funny face there and I'm wearing a similar blue shirt. I just basically sit in this chair all day. Um, all right, so here's how it works. You basically take this chart and you answer these questions. What did you do? What problems did you solve? What lessons did you learn or skills did you gain? What impact did you have? And how did you apply what you learned? And y'all, that's gonna create a beautiful outline for your personal insight question. Check out, here's an example of this, of what this looks like. You know, and this might take you 20, 25 minutes. Okay, but let me give you an idea of what to put in these columns. For this one, um, you know, the key I think for what you did is what I call epic verbs. So let me just give you this list. I'm gonna do act, epic verbs list. Epic verbs, college essay guide, check this out. So, one of the keys is using verbs to demonstrate what you've done. Okay, so let's say you're writing about, let's pick, um, let's pick a, a, a fundraising project that you did, a fundraiser. You did a bake sale at school. Okay, now if you were to just be like, oh yeah, I did this bake sale, it might sound kind of basic. But I want to know, first of all, what did you do? Okay, and if you had management skills, I want to know, well, did you, uh, did you manage people? Did you partner with anyone on it? Or did you prioritize things? Did you have to make any evaluations? You see how this is like, oh, okay, yeah. Did you supervise anyone? Now suddenly it's like, oh, dang, yeah, I did have some responsibilities, okay? When you were communicating with folks, not just like I talked to, but did you um, correspond? I don't, you didn't get kind of crazy with this. Did you document any of the process? Did you interact? Did you publicize the thing? So when you start to look at these verbs, you start to get ideas about like, okay, I could maybe think about some, some things that I've done here. And you're gonna fill your first column with all the stuff you did related to whatever you're writing about. The next one is sometimes people think, oh, I didn't really solve any problems. I was just volleyball team initially. Like, were there any, you know, personal things you had to overcome? Any mental barriers, you know, in terms of, you know, local stuff? I mean, again, this, this applies to kind of any activity, but community problems, you know, with, you know, in some cases, students are like, oh, we, yeah, we, our team was going to close. So we had to like work to like recruit enough people to like save the guitar club or save the whatever it was. Uh, lessons le learned, skills you gained. This to me is like the values exercise. If you've ever heard me present, you've heard me talk about, you're probably sick of hearing me talk about values. But you can just take that values exercise and be like, okay, let me take a look at this. What did I gain? What did I learn from this experience? What did you learn about, you know, uh, community? What did you learn about empathy? What did you learn about autonomy, your ability to get stuff done? Okay, so you take that values list and you spend, again, five minutes on each of these columns and then impact you have. I think this is really huge for the UCs. Who, who did your work impact and how do we know? Do you have any numbers to support that? Was your club all dudes? And then after once you became president, suddenly there was like a 50-50 you know, split. There was much more gender balance. Um, how do we know you had impact? You know, you can also, it could be something that someone said to you. Wow, now, you know what, now I feel like I feel like I get physics in a way that I didn't. You know, my 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 the person I was mentoring said to me once, I'm not that's not me, I'm just saying. 
So what, what impact did you have? And then how did you apply what you learned? How do you make this personal insight question more than just a, you know, this is a basketball essay. It's like, how did you take the lessons that you learned, the skills you gained, empathy, autonomy, whatever it is, and apply it somewhere else, okay? Keep in mind that these, these um, topics, whatever you choose, one thing I like to say is your topic is not your topic. You're not writing a basketball essay or debate essay. You're right, your topic is always you, okay? And you're just using basketball or debate to really show the skills, qualities, values, and interests that are gonna make a difference on the UC campus. And connecting back to the 14 points of comprehensive review. Did I mention that already? All right, so that's one exercise. I love that one. That's good for pretty much anything, okay? The Elon Musk exercise, the structure is a little bit different. This is if you're facing a, you know, if you face a challenge. So what was the problem? Describe the challenge that you were facing or are facing, okay? And then raise the stakes. Tell us why this is a big deal, okay? Why was overcoming this challenge, even whether it was like, if we didn't do anything about this, then the club was going to close. And there, would, there wouldn't be this many, you know, opportunities for, you know, students to whatever, creatively express themselves. And then maybe you articulate the vision here. You know, wh wh what were you going for? What were you looking for? This is probably the most important part. Tell us what you did. We got to know what you or the team did. And I think it's really important to clarify your particular involvement. Why were you or are you crucial to the success of the project or the club or whatever it was, the initiative? And then again, impact you learned, lessons, impact you had, lessons you learned, values you gained, okay? If we've got time at the end, I'll come back and give an example of this one. But um, yeah, but that those are the steps. What was the problem? Why was it a big deal? What did you do about it? And what'd you learn, okay? Now that's again, good for like community service projects. However, if the challenge that you faced is more personal, I'm gonna recommend the feelings and needs exercise, which is more like, here's the structure for this. Oh, is it here? Oh, it's not here. It's on this PDF, but I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna say it to you actually. Let me not show you double face of me. So the feelings and needs exercise basically works like this. And there's a longer version of this. I'll follow up via email with this, uh, with a video of this. But, um, you know, what was the challenge you faced? Number two, what were the effects the impact of that challenge on you. Number three, once you've got the challenges and the effects, how did you feel about that? Feelings, and you can kind of do these in columns. Next, what were the needs that you needed to fulfill based on the feelings? So for every feeling, there's some kind of need underneath that. Connection, belonging, the need to be seen, the need to contribute. And then answer, well, okay, based on that need, what did you do about it? What, you know, what, what, what steps did you take? How did you become active in your life? And then you're probably gonna guess this, but like once you did those things, what did you learn through the experience? Okay, so those simple questions, and again, I'll follow up with a video where you can kind of walk through that, will help you if you faced significant challenges in your life, especially personal challenges. Okay, so my advice, once you've got your topics, is to go ahead and choose one of these different exercises, whichever one you want. You can do multiple exercises for the same topic if you want. If you're like, I'm not sure if this is a challenges-based one or not, you can brainstorm a challenges-based version of the essay and a non-challenges-based version, right? So just to give an example of that, it's like, let's say you're you're writing an essay on um, your involvement with uh, an internship and you had a chance to virtually do something and, you know, let's say maybe it was kind of like a low level, like a data entry thing. And you thought it was gonna be much bigger than it, but it ended up kind of being just like spreadsheets. First of all, ask yourself, is this like a great topic for me? And then you can ask yourself, okay, do I wanna talk about a challenge related to this? Or do I wanna talk more about what I learned through this experience? Oftentimes students kind of try to force the challenges essay. And oftentimes with an internship type essay, it's like, I was nervous to do it. I didn't think I could do it. But then I realized halfway through, oh, I really can do this and built my confidence. That's one type of essay. And you could use the feelings and needs exercise to brainstorm a challenges based version of that PIQ. But you might also consider, okay, well, maybe I could fill out this BB's chart and think, okay, if I fill out all these columns, maybe I do think about, yeah, it was kind of a basic data entry job, but no, you know, I did spend a lot of time and I did learn some stuff and I was helping to solve some problems. And I do think I actually had an impact. In fact, my supervisor told me I had an impact. And so I would encourage you to like, take a look carefully at these three um, different styles. And again, I'll, I'll follow up with links for these. Um, okay, so that's to kind of get started. And then what does a great personal insight question look like? Let's look at a couple. I'm going to share with you my screen again. I know I'm going fast, y'all. Somebody probably said that in the chat box. Sorry, I'm not having a chance to look at the chat. I'm trying to get a bunch of content in. All right, let's take a look at one of these. 
So since fifth grade, I've been my parents' right-hand man at Mingji restaurant in our hometown of Zacatecas, Mexico. Sometimes I needed to be the cashier, other times a dishwasher or chef's assistant in the kitchen, and eventually I was expected to interact with customers as the youngest waiter on staff. Wait, isn't this supposed to be a leadership prompt? Dang right, this is a leadership prompt. This is the leadership essay. This guy was his parents' right-hand man at this restaurant. And he makes the topic really clear at the start. So this is jumping ahead a little bit in my agenda, but I think the most important thing for your opening of your personal insight question is that we get a sense of what your topic was, is. And in this case, the topic was working as right-hand man in his parents' restaurant. Great, super clear. Next, what did he do? Let's find out. As I developed more in this role, I became a keystone piece for the waiters. I taught them how to properly attend groups of unsatisfied customers and the fundamentals of customer service. I acquired organizational habits and dialogue more fluently to resolve problems. I developed better strategies to speed up home delivery and in-restaurant service. Through this, I achieved not only a better rapport with my colleagues, but also a more honest and enjoyable relation with my dad's employees. It implanted a strong work ethic in me that reminds me of the hardworking farmers of my past generations. This is a student, first gen, um, you know, low income, and and um, you know, wrote a strong. I mean, this essay he, he got into all the UCs. Uh, you know, it's it's clear he's done a ton of work, and that 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 just comes through so clearly here. I believe that to achieve efficiency and productivity in the working environment between employees and manager, it requires not only the firmness and attention of a boss, but also the empathy and vision of a leader. What great insight! Let me read that again. Look at this. Look at those values coming through, right? Firmness and attention. So this is what he learned. And also empathy and vision. Great qualities. These are the qualities I developed as my dad's assistant. Working through the many facets of a small business has taught me the key role of small groups in a system. Another insight. And I applied this beyond the walls of the restaurant. Tell me how. In school, you'll see me managing and organizing one-on-one -on -one mediations with peer counselors. And at the same time, earning myself a leading position in my school's British English Olympics team. What, what? As a result of my years laboring for my family restaurant, you might think that I would like to become an entrepreneur, but actually I picture myself as an engineer because I believe both require the adaptability, perseverance, dedication, and strategy to succeed in this field. So, qualities that come through so clearly in this. What do I love about this personal insight question? A few things. One, the unconventional take, right? Leadership, not this way, but this other way. I love those active verbs. You know I do. You know I love them so much, I just highlighted them in bold. Even the word developed appearing twice. I don't even care. Um, what he shares, what he learned through the experience, super clear. How he applied his lessons elsewhere, something that we talked about already. And then what are the values, skills, and qualities he's gonna bring to the UCs, right? He straight up names them, y'all. Perseverance, dedication, adaptability, and strategy. Now this is a little bit straightforward. Some of you are like, aren't these supposed to be creative? Well, I feel like if you have to pick between information and creativity on the spectrum, I mean, I want y'all to be like a little bit more over here, okay? Even if you write like the most beautiful poem, if it doesn't connect back to the 14 points of comprehensive review, some of you counselors listening are saying amen, uh, or I would call for an amen if we were live, then it's really gonna not give them the information they need in order to know what how you're gonna contribute to the college campus, except for the fact that you're like a creative person, a great writer. Give us some information, y'all. I feel like I'm shouting. I'm just excited about these PIQs. And then the clear structure makes it super easy to read. If I'm skimming this as a reader, I go, okay, oh, he worked in this restaurant, and he, I would, it, he wouldn't bold this, obviously, but oh, he did lots of cool stuff. Great, what did he learn? Firmness and attention, empathy, vision. Oh, cool, some cool qualities. Taught me the key role, groups in a system. That sounds cool. Oh, and he applied it in these other areas. Okay, and he's gonna be an engineer. And look at all these qualities, great. Now, I skimmed it, I don't know, maybe a little bit, maybe that's the UC reader pace. Maybe it's a little bit slower, but you can kind of see that as I'm going through this, I'm getting a lot of qualities, all right? So. If, this, if you like this leadership essay, I say go do a BBS exercise and then create your simple outline. Intro, right? What have you done? What have you learned? How have you applied this elsewhere? And what do you wanna do in the future? You don't have to put this in there. This is what he did for his. But this is how simple you can be in your outline, okay? Let's look at a creative one. I was gonna take the lid off, but the lid was already off. That sounds like some kind of weird metaphor, but I don't know what it stands for. Drumming. All right, so here's a student, creativity, drumming. And by the way, that was a montage, what I call a montage, because he's not focused on a challenge. He's like, let me tell you about all the stuff we did in this restaurant. Now, that student had faced challenges, and he wrote about those in his UC5. You know, there were financial difficulties and stuff, but he saved that for another personal insight question. There, he just focused on, what are all the different sides of me that I wanna show through this thing, and how do I demonstrate leadership? All right, this one is what I call a narrative approach, which is kind of based on a challenge. Check it out. 
Sometime during middle school, I began my journey to establish a rock band, become its drummer, and most importantly, grow magnificent long hair. Now, just because they're the UCs doesn't mean that you can't be funny. This is another student who got into all the UCs. You can bring in your sense of humor. You can have a nice hook. So when people ask me like, should I make it creative or not? I mean, I would say again, make sure it's got good information and you'll see this personal insight question does, but you can bring the funny if you're funny. If you're not, don't start now. I enrolled at a local music institute for drum classes twice a week. I didn't have a drum kit at home, so I'd eagerly await for those two one hour sessions of smashing cymbals and double kicking basses every week. I was having a great time, but some part of me always felt that I wasn't exploring my musical creativity as much as I could. Okay, so this starts out as a montage essay where it's like, okay, it's something about drumming, but then he's like, hey, I had a problem. I wanted to explore my musical creativity and it kind of raises the question for us. Okay, well, how did you do that? How, here's what he did. Over the next few months, as I continued to develop my mastery of the drum kit, percussion became a part of my everyday life. And soon I could sense rhythmic patterns and ordinary sounds, cool. When no, now that's something you wouldn't put in your activities list. That'd sound weird. You'd be like, <laughs> you got 350 characters, you know, started to hear drums everywhere I walked, you know. I don't think it would sound weird. I, I get it, what he's saying here. When no drums were available, I'd start finger tapping in synchronous rhythms on any rigid surface. And before long, finger tapping became an integral part of my rhythmic intelligence. I didn't even know I had a rhythmic intelligence, but he just enlightened me. Unlike drumming, now, by the way, drumming, and the, the reason I'm reading this one is drumming could be kind of a basic thing because it's like I bang on things. But what this student has done is he's dug a little deeper and been like, okay, what is drumming? What does it mean to me? And he's writing sentences that other drummers aren't gonna write. You know, no one else is gonna write this sentence. So here's a challenge for you. When you're working on these PIQs, ask yourself, when you look at your draft, go, could someone else have written these paragraphs and get into specific sentences? Could someone else have written this sentence? If maybe so, revise, get it more specific. That's how you stand out. Unlike drumming, finger tapping allowed me to incorporate melody into standard grooves by tapping on surfaces that have varying degrees of hollowness. Since it was a percussion style I instinctively developed by myself, Finger tapping gave me the artistic freedom to create something new. But I didn't want to shape my spontaneous finger tapping artistry to master another percussion instrument like the tabla or machine. Therefore, okay, level up moment, y'all. You don't have to do this in your essay to make a great personal insight question, but this is, I'm just about to tell you, it's about to level up. Therefore, I decided to invent my own instrument. This is called a twist. Equipped my, with my expertise in robotics, he's bringing in another side of himself, and coding, I used electronic items like, I don't even know how to pronounce that, piezoelectric sensors, PCBs, and transistors to build an instrument that reflected my own finger tapping habits and patterns. Crazy, in a good way. It had 10 small pads for my fingers and two, you get the idea. I need some geeky language here. I chose a Raspberry Pi as its CPU and programmed it to play all kinds of melodies and beats. Now, by the way, I'd like to say, if you know some stuff about some stuff, and some of y'all on this call do, in fact, probably everybody on this call, can you work in a little bit of some of that geeky language so that we know what, that you know your stuff? you know, piezoelectric sensors, PCBs and transistors. He's not going so far that I feel alienated. I'm like, oh, dang, he got really into it. In this way, I learned how to coordinate my different talents and skills to amplify my total creative output. Ah, coming back to that problem. Okay, cool. He was trying to amplify his creative output and he did it. My friends and family suggested that I name and advertise my invention and maybe sell it to a company. But if I did that, I would lose the essence of why I built it. I built it not to master its musical capacity, but develop my own musical creativity in case you didn't catch it at the end of the last paragraph. Nice, super clear. What do I love about this? Notice that his hook is super short. I don't want you all writing these hooks that take us like two paragraphs, three paragraphs, 200 words to get into like the, the topic, right? Keep it short. And I, if my, my preference is to name the topic pretty close to the, to, the, to the opening so that if the reader's skimming, they're like, ah, this is an essay about drum, or sorry, personal insight question. And then he raises that little question, which kind of keeps us interested, right? He talks about what he did to resolve his challenge. He helps us understand what he learned. He's really clear about the value. And then he levels it up. Again, you don't have to have this level up moment where you like invented your own drumming machine. But what I do like about this that you could maybe, you know, incorporate is could I, could I connect disciplines? So I connect my creative side to like my techie side. All right. Something that you could think about. Yes, I'm writing about basketball, but could you bring in something that you learned in psychology or there's a particular philosophical concept just to like, you know, mix it up a little bit. This is my mixing up just mixing it up gesture. And then he talks about why it's important to him. And then his, his core value, right? Musical creativity. Now that's of course coming back to the prompt for this one. 
Again, you can either do BBs or you can do a feelings and needs exercise if you want. And that simple outline, you know, intro, first thing I did, and here's the impact on me. And then here's this other thing I did. And then here's the impact of that on me. These are like each of the paragraphs. And then the ending for him was TBD to be determined. Because when you create your first outline, you don't actually need to know what your ending is going to be. Just write the dang thing and see if it's going to work as a potential topic. All right. I wish I had more time. Oh, you know what? There's one more thing I want to share with you. What are the qualities? We're going to get to Q&A in just a second. Do we have any questions coming in? Let's see. We're going to have a bunch. And I'm going to be like overwhelmed. OMG. Look at all the questions. All right. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to try and answer as many of those questions. I'm, uh, I don't know. I'm going to have to be selective, I think. I can't get to everybody's questions. Sorry. But -um -bum -bum. All right. The great personal insight question test. What are we looking for here? Number one, information. Does your PIQ provide information? This is what to do. I think you can ask yourself this early on, but especially if you've already written drafts and you're on this call, ask yourself, does my PIQ provide info that adds to my application? Does that information connect back to, last time I'll say it, the 14 points of comprehensive review, okay? Clarity, is your topic clear from hopefully at the start? And is the purpose of each paragraph clear? If you're like, you know what? Paragraphs three and two kind of looking the same, combine them or cut one. Action, do we get a sense of those active verbs? What did you do? This is something that I realized like in the last month. Like I looked at all these PIQs that I love from the past few years. And I was like, you know, a lot of these, they're, they're, they're just these verbs. That's why I highlighted them in bold. You know, um, so values. Can we understand your core values? Sometimes naming those explicitly is okay. Sometimes students are like, no, that's going to be too obvious or too too basic. It's okay. Making sure that it's really clear for them is is good, especially if you're if you're like writing and you're like, I'm not sure that it is clear. And then insight. Do you answer so what several times? So what was the impact on you? So how did you apply this somewhere else? So why are you writing about this as a topic? What does it have to do with you? Okay. Um, yeah, that's, those are my, those are my things for like what, you know, why I think, uh, the, the, the elements to, to include, um, let me do just like a one minute, um, PSA. I've got this course that's happening. I'll email you follow-up stuff, but it's a course on the UCP IQs. It's pay what you can. It's it, everything that I've been showing you on this. It's not because I'm lazy. It's because I just actually think this is the best way to show you this information. Everything that I'm showing you that I've been showing you is inside that course. Um, how to write the UC personal insight questions. It's got all these, you know, sweet little videos. It tells you I'm 0% progress. I need to get on it, but it's got a ton of modules, you know, how to work through each one of these personal insight questions, revising, you know, how do you revise a narrative PIQ if it's challenges based? What if it's not, how do you get feedback, um, polishing and grammar, you know, everything soup to nuts. It's, it's, it's pretty comprehensive. And did I mention it's pay what you can? And what do I mean by that? Like sometimes students are like, oh, I feel bad. I don't want you to feel bad. I want you to take the thing and have the resources. You know, there is a free option. So take advantage of that. Counselors who are listening, CEG for schools, which we'll put the link in the chat box, we'll follow up. If you want to sign up all of your students, because you're like, you know what? I think some of my students would take advantage of this. Do it. I don't want money to be a barrier for anybody. So I mean that, I mean that, I mean that. The UCs do a great job of access and 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 equity i want to be a part of that mission that's why i'm doing this course that's why i'm doing this webinar so i want y'all to take advantage of these resources okay and that goes for you know any of the the resources on my site so that's why all the stuff that i do is is free so questions let's take a look let me jump in all right but um but um but um okay i'm going to I'm going to, okay, I'm going to jump around and I'm not going to share with you the list because then people are going to be like, oh, you should have answered that question. But this is the list that Ashley's put together for me. Um, what are ways to effectively end my UC personal insight questions without sounding cliche or overbearing? It's really, I, I don't think it's a huge thing. I think what's most important is your, your topics and are they clear? Okay. In other words, did I, did you make sure that you are, um, you know, that your topic is clear and that your values and insights, the things that I mentioned are clear. So don't obsess too much about how you end it. Ending in a straightforward way, like totally works, okay? Um, is it okay to have two PIQs that discuss the same subject with different focuses, like the history of dance and dance improvisation? I, I would say, Emerson, try and work those into the same one because then you free up this whole other possibility thing that you, you can probably combine those pretty well. And then it's a much better dance essay. It's twice as good and you've got a whole space for something else. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. 
I'm taking care of my I'm taking care of my six-year-old cousin because her mom has COVID-19. Can I add this as a volunteer community service? Absolutely, Candace. Yes. How do you differentiate two PIQs if both are on leadership? UC1 and seven. Different topics, of course. Yeah, that's how. So the UC1 is leadership. The UC7 is community service. It could be that, you know, your leadership essay shows community service. That's okay. Right? It could be that your your um the flip it, right? It could be that your community service one shows leadership. That's okay too. It's okay to also show leadership twice. Okay. It's okay to Oshada. It's okay to to do community service twice. Karina, is it a good idea to be creative with the structure or should we just be straightforward? Karina, if you want to be creative, make it a little tiny 10% creative, but mostly straightforward. But um but um but um how big of a challenge should it be for number 5? Good question, Alvin. So, this is something that I talk about a little bit in the course, but the, the gist of it is if it's something that's had a significant impact on your life, and impacted your academics. So things that are kind of light are like, you know, I wouldn't write about like a bad grade you got. There's a whole separate section for that called the, you know, the academic history section. You can explain a bad grade. I wouldn't write about like the breakup of a romantic relationship or, you know, moving schools is pretty common. You know, this is for challenges that, you know, have really, and, and it's hard, it's hard to, cause I don't want to be like, oh, it's this, this or this, um, you know, that have had a significant impact on you and your family. Okay. You know, work, employment, you know, did with somebody with, you know, financial difficulties, some of the other stuff that I mentioned earlier. But um, but um, but um, what about personal issues related to COVID? Is that too obvious for this period of time? I mean, it's up to you, Lynn, because the UCs, as, as far as we know, don't have that COVID specific section. So yeah, if there are significant challenges that came about via COVID, that could be a good UC5 topic potentially. Would it be a negative if we did the pick your topic prompts? No, it's not. I mean, that's totally fine. It's just, I think that most of what you're writing about, you know, could probably fit into one of those seven. Um, so just, again, I said I wasn't going to say it again, but as long as they're connecting back to what the UCs are looking for, I think you're okay. Um, but, you know, that's a hard one. I mean, I find like what makes you stand out just to me seems like such an open-ended thing. I mean, they wanted to give you some freedom and latitude, but the reason they, they, crafted those prompts that way is because they're trying to direct you towards those 14 points. Can we use our narrative common app essay in the significant challenge essay? Yes, Raj, but you're probably going to, it's going to be hard when you're going from 650. It's easy-ish to cut it from 650 from the, for the common app to 500 for like the coalition app. I find that it's often hard to go from 650 on the personal statement to like 350 because that just tends to be like a different, um, story. Having said that, some of the things that I think that students often end up doing less of is like the, the, whatever, if they had like a nice hook, the hook ends up getting like really short in one to two sentences. It'll be really important, Raj, for you to like do this three-step outline, which is like, what were the challenges I faced? What did I do about it? And what did I learn? And, and you can do one third, one third, one third. So let's say, for example, here's a quick word budget for your common app. Your challenge is the first third of the essay. So like 200 ish words, 250. And then what I did about it is like the next 200 to 50 and the, what I learned is 200 to 50 split that into thirds for 350, right? So it's like challenges and effects 125 ish 125 for what I did about it 125 for what I learned. Okay. And, and, and it, it might help you to just bullet point outline what you're doing in your personal statement. That'll help you cut it. Don't just, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say Raj go in and just start trimming from your 650 because it might feel kind of choppy, kind of Frankenstein, like uh, these kind of connect, but it feels a little bit off. I would say, do a new outline and then write a new draft. And when you write that new draft, it's actually gonna, I think it actually save you time when you're writing on that shorter one. Uh, is mental illness something you can write about or is it a bad idea? Talk to your counselor on this because it could be that your counselor, your counselor's gonna have more information about you and the context of your situation. Um, you know, it's tricky. It's tricky because mental illness has become, first of all, it's become a somewhat common topic. And so it becomes a little bit more difficult to, to stand out. And that's probably not what you expected me to say. Um, the second thing is, you know, you really want to make sure if you're writing about it, that you're writing about it carefully so that colleges, it doesn't send up a yellow flag or a red flag. And they worry that you're not going to be able to, you know, have the resources internally or that they're going to have the resources externally to support you. So you want to make sure, like I said, that con that um, three part thing, that if you are writing about it, that it's really focused on not the challenges, but what you did about it, what you learned through the experience. You know, is this something that's way in the rear view or is this something that's still happening? If it's something that's still happening that you're really dealing with, 
again, I want to refer you to your counselor so that you can have a longer conversation about it. But I would say tread, tread carefully. And the other thing is students sometimes are writing about mental illness because it's such a big thing in their lives. But if you brainstorm and, and do your activities list and come up with a bunch of different ideas for topics, it could be that you're like, you know what? I've got so much else that I want to talk about. You know, I don't know if I have room to talk about this. I mean, again, if it's a big thing and you want to weave it in, but maybe you weave it in in the context of like another essay. So like, for example, let's say you're writing about, um, I'm just going to pick something kind of random, tennis. And you're writing this tennis essay and it's all about a, I don't know. Let's say you're using tennis for the, uh, which would you use it for? Uh, let's say you taught tennis and you're using it for the leadership or no, let's say, let's say it's for the, the community service one, the UC7. And you're writing about coaching tennis and how it's helped you. And then maybe you weave in, this was also helpful for me too, because I'd been struggling. You know, I, I talked to one of my, you know, the students that I was teaching and, you know, she was going through depression and I related to her some of what depression had been like for me and, and how I'd worked through it. And so you can kind of weave in, I'm not saying minimize it, but I'm saying that there are lots of ways to weave in mental health and what you've did about it, done about it in different prompts. So keep that in mind that you don't have to devote a whole, you know, personal insight question to the topic of mental health. But again, talk to your counselor. Well, we need good writing skills to be considered. I mean, it needs to be clear, you know, it needs to be clear. They need to be able to understand it. Um, and, and, and it's, and it's what I would say is even more important than good writing skill is like hard work because you've got some time to develop these. Bum, ba -dum, bum, bum. For special talents or skills, can you still write about the ability to connect with people if you give specific examples? Again, go back to those 14 points, Maddie, and are there specific things that you can connect to? Maybe some things from your extracurricular activities list to show how that manifests yourself. But the short answer is yes. What advice for out-of-state applicants? Same advice. Should we reuse? Oh, I already answered that. Ba -dum, bum, bum. Creativity. I'm kind of skimming. Sorry, some of these are a little bit long. When you write about the challenge prompt, does the challenge have to be an academic one? No. I'm a military child. I want to make that my prompt. Yeah. How can I weave that into academically? Well, what impact has being a military kid, Kevin, had on you? You know, moving around a lot. What impact has that had on your academics? I imagine it's impacted your academics. You've probably gone to a bunch of different schools. It's probably been harder for you to adjust to new school systems. I'm just assuming these things about you. But um, again, challenges, what I did about it and what I learned. That's a great, yeah, that's a great thing. Um, ba -dum -bum -bum. Let's see. How many activities should we aim to include? As many as you've got, Jordan. Some students are going to submit four activities and some are going to submit 20. Whatever you've got. Um, would you say speaking first person helps or takes away from your writing? I would say it helps, Willie. Use I language. Here's what I did. It's great. Would help, having a more obscure hobbies or extracurriculars make you stand out in the pool? Of course, right? Like a medieval blacksmithing personal insight question is going to stand out next to a debate essay. But if you've never done medieval blacksmithing, you can't write about it. But if you've done stuff, Amy, that's like a little bit uncommon and you can connect it to lots of different sides of yourself. Here's a quick tip for how to how to figure out if your um, if your topic is something that's a good one, quote unquote, like if you're gonna be able to connect it to a lot of different things. I'm grabbing a blue sheet of paper. Um, I don't know why I told you that. But let's say for example, Amy, that you do um, uh, -bum 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 -bum. metallurgy. Uh, I'm trying to pick some like random ones. Juggling, let's do juggling, Amy. Let's say you're a juggler. I'm just, I wonder if I guessed it, I probably didn't. So take juggling and write it at the top of a sheet of paper, put a circle, and then Google values exercise, college essay guy, and you're gonna see this exercise, okay? Check this out. Not exercise, it's a menu. This is, I call this the Cheesecake Factory menu because it's got everything on it, <laughs> all right? And then I want you to go, okay, juggling. What on this list could I connect juggling to? So I'm not much of a juggler, but if I were a juggler, I could probably connect it to art because there's definitely an art to juggling. I could connect it to beauty. Eh, art and beauty are going to go together. Um, Self-discipline, I could definitely connect it to discipline. What else could I connect juggling to? Um, intensity, more intensity. Money, nope. Recognition, accountability, you know, community, because I juggle with all my cool juggling friends. All right, I've only done three. I want you to brainstorm like four to seven, Amy. But once you do that, you're going to have this list of these qualities. And each one of these could become a paragraph in your personal insight question. And you don't, and I'm saying brainstorm seven, because you're probably going to choose three to four and focus on those. 
Now the key to this exercise, and this is something that I said I was gonna talk about earlier, but especially if you've got something common like basketball or let me, let's do what's soccer is super common. You know, I'd love to look, switch out soccer for this because I don't want to hear in your soccer essay about discipline, hard work and perseverance. I know that it takes all those things. I want to hear about how soccer has taught you about art and what it's taught you about Discipline's pretty common. I would do a different one from discipline. What does soccer taught you about the real value of community? Right? So those brainstorming un, what I call uncommon connections are going to help you see. And if you can come up with a bunch of these, that's great because then it's like, okay, dang, now I feel like, now I feel like I, I could, I've got some range here. Again, you can do that BBS exercise to do it, but this is a quick, simple one that like test your topic as it were. We got two minutes. Um, where would you put personal hobbies? You can put that in the activities list. Can you turn a PIQ into a poem or short story related to the topic? I would steer clear of that, Cassidy, just because I think the UCs really want information. Now, I'm not gonna tell you 100% don't do it. If it's really good and it's got a lot of information in it, then you could. But again, that to me on the spectrum of like information to like creativity or poetry, I call it, so it's like information or poetry. Poetry is literally on this side of the spectrum. I wanna get you like kind of over here. I wanna talk about overcoming a family situation, but it didn't affect my grades academically. So should I put it under prompt eight or five? No, I think five is fine, Jessica. But what I would say is in that situation, you know, I'm, I'm sure it impacted you if it was like a, a big situation. One of the things you can say is like, despite all of this, I was still able to keep my grades up. You know, and I think you've addressed that part of the prompt. Just a thought. Do you have to write about a specific moment or time or can you speak generally and list several small moments? Alyssa, I actually think it's really hard to write about a specific time or moment. That's to me, that's not, I know that's like advice that we hear out there. I, I, I don't read many amazing personal insight questions or essays that talk about a specific moment in time. Or if they do talk about a moment, they just stay on it for like three lines and then they jump to like something else and talk about what it meant to them and what it made them think of and they kind of turn it into a montage. So you, you're gonna include specifics, but I think it's okay to list a few different things. I mean, look at the ones that I shared with you. Like none of those talk about a specific moment in time and they all get into the, all the UCs. Not all, the ones they applied to. But -dum, but -dum, but -dum. Scrolling down, let me, get, let me get to some of the more, the later questions. Is, do, do, do you have, um, if you don't, okay, we got, we're gonna do two more questions. I'm gonna go over by one minute. Would you say, Improving your study habits could go under overcoming a significant challenges or an educational barrier. I think so, Sarah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think, you know, overcoming an educational, mm, I would go under maybe significant challenge um, for that one. And, and, and especially, I mean, here's the other thing to ask yourself, Sarah, is like, is this something that I could explain very briefly and factually in my additional information section? So we didn't really talk about this. I'm talking about it right at the very end here, but there's this also, it's called the additional comment section. That's a space like on the common app additional info and you can put whatever you want. You can explain, you know, bad grades there. So the way to do that is just by being really straightforward, Sarah, like a factual bullet point. Here was the challenge that I faced. Here's what I did about it. Here's what I learned. And if you can get that into like a short paragraph, then you can save that um, space in your personal insight questions for like some other side of you. Okay. Um, I'm gonna do one more question. I'm trying to pick a good one. Would comparing yourself to, mm, that's not a good question. My style. Would you recommend starting with an anecdote or jumping straight into your topic? I think I answered this, but it came late. So maybe I didn't. I would say go straight into your topic, personally. This is just one person's opinion. But rather than starting with the whole setup, they've read, I mean, I would just get right into it. What have you learned? Give me the different values that it's shaped in you. That's my advice. I know I'm repeating myself, so I'm gonna do one more. Can you, come yeah. Do you recommend your balance permission? Okay. Sorry, I'm trying to find, it's, it's hard to pick a good one that we hasn't covered something we've already talked about. Not to say that these aren't all great questions. Um, how do we know what is an objectively good essay? Okay, there's no such thing as an objectively good essay, but the five qualities, I just wanna come back to them, Jesse, that I mentioned are, let me just show them to you again because some folks are visual learners. 
But um, but this will be the last one. I know I'm recapping something, but I think this is a really important point. Okay, how do you know if you've what you've written is quote unquote good? Here are the qualities that I want to make sure that you get. All right, information, clarity, action, per values, insight. These aren't just you know woo woo terms. Are you giving information that helps set them set you apart from other students from your school who are applying? Is your topic clear? You don't want the reader reading through your personal insight question and being like, what is this about? It seems to be something about, you know, like leadership, but I, I just don't know what the topic is, right? Action, do we get a sense of what you've done, how you've spent your time, how you've contributed? Values, this is a good one. You know, and you, again, you can use this values list to kind of scan and be like, okay, what was that? What, what, what were the different things? Oh, sorry, not this one, this is the values list. What were those different things that I learned, how I developed, how I was, you know, developed myself through this process? And then insight. This is a big one. Do you answer so what? Several times in your PIQ. All right. That's what I got. That's what I got. We did okay. Um, thanks. I hope to see some of you on the course. It's going to start in like 10 days. It's open now so that folks can do the pre-work. Again, did I mention? It's pay what you can. No financial barriers. And um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I hope to see some of y'all. All right. Peace. Have a great night.